This is PTFC Driven, presented by Toyota. I'm Nat Borchers. We are interviewing Thorns and Timbers players to talk about adversity in their soccer careers. In this installment, we interview Portland Thorns defender Gabby Seiler. Gabby walks us through not one, but two heartbreaking injuries she suffered while playing college and in the pros. Here's our chat with Gabby. Yeah, so take me back there um, to that college season, because I, I believe you, uh, you had said that you were uh, playing uh, college ball for University of Florida, yes. and you'd had a, a last game, and then you'd, you'd had an injury in that last game. Is that right? Or it was a game that ended your career in college? Yes. So I, yeah, we were, it was our last SEC game, I think, before SEC tournament, and just I took a weird, I didn't really take a weird step, but I was going towards goal. That's all I really remember, and I just got taken out from behind, and, you know, I feel like when you – maybe not all the time, but a lot of times when you have big injuries, I feel like you kind of know in that moment, or you know, you maybe not, you may not know what it is, but in that moment, I definitely knew I did something. Yeah. And so you have that, that injury, it's your senior year, right? So yeah. uh, what was going through your mind when, when you, when you went down, when you felt it, did you know immediately or was it just kind of like, not really sure? Yeah, I definitely knew immediately. I mean, I, it was definitely one of, it was a horrible pain. I mean, I was in a lot of pain and it was something I had never felt before. And, you know, obviously I kind of talked about this in my article, but the first thing you think is you, your ACL, just because it's so common. And I had so many teammates that said they just knew. And it's not that I knew it was my ACL, but that was the first thing I thought of because it was so painful. Um, and I just remember, I mean, even when I look back at the video of it, it was, it's pretty traumatic. <laughs> so I think, I guess I just assumed I thought it was my ACL, but I definitely knew I did something wrong. And you, you wrote uh, about that day, uh, just about the uncertainty uh, of, of what to do next, right? Because uh, what was the uh, medical advice you got at that point in time? So it was kind of crazy. So that game actually didn't end my college career, which I didn't go into detail about this, but I sat out my senior night. Um, so I didn't play. So I guess we had one regular season game left. So I sat on my senior night and then, um, I actually played in the NCAA tournament. Um, so I got my right. MRI and they said, you tore your LCL, but you need to let it heal for a couple of weeks. So I sat out, I think three weeks. Um, I don't think I played in the first NCAA tournament game. So it almost was at four weeks and I had to, and then, um, they were like, we don't recommend that you play, but it's not going to necessarily damage anything. So at that point, I was like, well, I have maybe three, maybe two, maybe one more game left. So I'm going to play. <laughs> so I put on a knee brace, and I played the rest of the year. Um, wow. And we made it to the Elite Eight. Yeah, so yeah. I actually ended up playing on a torn LCM. Oh <laughs> Probably God. wasn't the smartest looking back, but I was told I wasn't going to necessarily hurt it worse. Um, so I took a month off, and then I came back, and I was still in pain, but I definitely played on adrenaline, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I thought it was interesting, uh, just, just speaking to you before this interview, that you, I mean, you're a multi-sport athlete. You're also playing uh, basketball. You were recruited in college to go to play basketball, which is incredible. And you actually uh, had, uh, were playing for the University of Florida uh, women's basketball team when you realized th this was worse than you thought, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I had walked on to the basketball team and I – just I knew something I you know we I'd been training and I'd been practicing and I felt good but there was just this one train this one practice before a game and I was like I took a step and I kind of felt my knee hyper extend and that's how I injured it in the beginning and it just felt like it didn't stop it just felt like it kept going and in that moment I was like you know if I'm gonna be I want to be a pro soccer player that's my dream probably need to make sure that everything's okay just before I decide to take that next step so in that moment, I knew something probably wasn't right. And that's when I decided to kind of see the doctor and see the surgeon again. So you, you've, you've gone through this thing where you've fought through the injury, you've played, you've made it all the way to the Elite Eight for your soccer team. You're about to start this journey as a basketball player. Then you feel your knee. Uh, so what happens now? Honestly, it was a really tough two days because – at that point, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm going to play pro. I'm going to play, so I'm going to play basketball, but then I'm going to go, I'm going to play um, professional soccer. And I, you know, you hear things like, oh yeah, you're going to get drafted in this round. Or, you know, you're like, you could get drafted, you know, and you have these teams that are interested in you. And so my first thought is like, oh my God, no one's going to want me. 
and I, I I didn't know I didn't really I just I think the uncertainty certainty of not knowing what was going to happen next was scary because you know I at that point I thought I wasn't injured anymore so I was like I I know I could potentially go to this team or this team wants me I talked to a few coaches within that month about, you know, oh yeah, we're going to draft you if you're still available or whatever. So I think just not knowing that anymore was really scary. And having to tell the coaches that I had to have knee surgery was, that was the scariest part for me, just not knowing what my future was going to be. Mentally, what were you telling yourself in terms of, of, of the process and in terms of, of making sure that you like, obviously everything's on the line right now, right? You have this, this future out ahead of you, but it is so uncertain in terms of, 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 you know, what to do and where it's going to lie. What, what was going through your head? I think for me, I just trusted in the process of everything and I trusted in myself. I'm like a big belief. I mean, this is kind of cliche, but I'm like, I am a big believer and everything happens for a reason. And I do think, you know, Maybe this was supposed to, I just kept holding on to the bag and maybe this was just supposed to happen. And this is how it was supposed to happen. And, you know, the worst part for me was I could have had surgery two months earlier, potentially, um, if I would have known that I needed to have surgery. And so that was hard. But at the same time, I just kept telling myself, I just kept holding on to the belief that this was supposed to happen to me and I was going to find a silver lining in it. You know, and, and something that stuck with me about what you wrote is you said that day I learned that I was never going to take for granted a day I got to wake up and do what I love. Uh, you, you just mentioned your, your appreciation from the sport really just kind of comes through, uh, you know, when you're going through this process. Uh, how did you, you know, maintain that appreciation? You know, how did you, you know, kind of keep positive, you know, that outlook? Yeah. You know? Well, it's funny because I just remember when that injury happened, I kind of talked about this, but I just kept thinking all of the, I kept thinking about all the times I complained about my situation or practice or just, you know, anything that was hard. And I just remember when I had, when I got, when I had that injury and I had surgery and going through that, I just remember thinking like, I will never take this for granted because it truly is something that I love. And, you know, I had no idea the uphill battles I was going to face with that knee surgery, but I knew that I wasn't going to take it for granted if I ever got the opportunity to step on the field again. And I wholeheartedly can say that since those moments, I haven't. So I think, you know, you don't realize, I think, how much you love something. Or maybe some people do. But I know for me, I didn't realize how much I love soccer until it got taken away from me. And you you get the surgery, right? You you end up um, going through the recovery process. And you ended up getting drafted, right, by the Thorns. Yeah. Right? And so they end up taking the chance on you. Um, so, uh, what was that uh, period like? You, you had been drafted, right? But you were recovering from your surgery. Yeah. So I, so during the draft, I'm watching and I get a call from the thorns and it was kind of a tricky situation because I had literally just found out I had to have surgery. And so at that point I hadn't told coaches yet, but Mark calls me and he's like, we're we're about to draft you. And I'm like, Mark, I I need to be honest with you. Like I'm having knee surgery tomorrow and I don't know. (laughs) what the future holds for me. I don't know if I'm going to be good enough. And so then he ends up taking a timeout and then he ends up drafting me. Anyways, he said, Gabby, we see your potential. We think you would fit in perfectly here. And he, I mean, he really, I mean, he truly just still believed in me. Mm -hmm. Um, And he believed that I could still be um, the player that I was before, even though I was going to have this uphill battle. So that was like, honestly crazy too, because it was, I mean, it was, I think it was refreshing because it gave me a little bit more hope that I could come back from it, even though I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Just him still having that belief in me. I think, you know, it just takes one person to believe in you for you to see how far you can go. And I think just having that little ounce of belief in me gave me the power to keep going. So it yeah. was really unique and special. And I'm really, really looking back. I'm really thankful that that's how it worked out. And so it, you end up getting, uh, recovering from the surgery, doing the PT, um, uh, what was the PT like? Because I know doing PT myself, it, it is it's an absolute grind. Uh, what it, were you going through mentally knowing, you know, you, you had a, you know, um, a professional opportunity, but you just weren't quite there yet. How hard was that to, to go it through? Was, I mean, it was awful. I, I never experienced anything like this before. And the worst part was is I had a non weight bearing injury. So with my ACL, um, you know, I could be, I could put weight on it over after a week or so. But with this injury, um, I was non-weight bearing for almost 10 weeks and I lived on the third floor of an apartment. 
So <laughs> that was the was hardest carrying part. carrying groceries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it, that was the hardest part because yeah. I had absolutely, like I just, I was walking around campus. It was 90 degrees and um, I was crutching around. I mean, it was just horrible. So I definitely didn't realize how awful that was going to be. Um, and I mean, I got through it, but I had no idea. I had no expectations, I guess. Well, yeah, you're able to, to recover from uh, the, the surgery, go through the PT, do the work, and then you're able to play the, the following season. Is that correct? Yeah, so I ended up recovering from that, and then I came. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And then so you were able to play that next season. You played uh, – that was last year, correct? And you got yes. to play six games last year. And then I believe it was August 16th happens is, is how you wrote. Um, can you, can you tell us uh, what happened on that day? Yeah, um, we were, it was a day before game, you know, pretty much practice. And, uh, um, I just remember it was the first five minutes of training and one of my best friends was visiting me. She was watching our training and she was visiting from Atlanta actually. And I just remember going in and I took, I was going to pressure somebody. She played the ball and I just took this weird step. And I felt, I just felt my knee, felt my bones at each other. And I immediately went down. And the first thing I said, I, I screamed, I was screaming, I tore my ACL, I tore my ACL. I just, I knew. Mm -hmm. And it was, I was just, I was so defeated. I will never forget it. My teammate, I mean, some of my teammates were in tears because they just, they knew what I had went through before and they all knew too. And I mean, I think everyone on the field just knew. I mean, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> it was like my worst nightmare. And you wrote in your article, you said, devastated doesn't even do it justice. I was mad. I questioned everything. I questioned everything in that moment. I couldn't believe it. So you, you'd had this injury at the end of your college career, right? It prevented you from playing your, your first year. You come in for your first year. You played those games. You know, you'd had the dream come true. And then you have the injury. You said devastated. How mentally, where were you? Oh, it was, it was hard. Honestly, I think I talked about it the next like couple of weeks. Honestly, like the next couple of months were just like blurry to me. Like, I feel like I wasn't even present. I was trying to be, I was trying to be positive. I, I like the, <coughs> honestly, the outpouring of support and love I got was really what was, I feel like keeping me afloat in the moment, but I wasn't there mentally. I mean, I was just, I was, I couldn't, I just was in shock, but I think what changed for me was I, I read this book about mentally strong people. I can't remember the name of it, but, and I remember reading this one line and it was like, stop feeling bad for yourself. Or I think once you realize like, just stop feeling bad for yourself and just realize that it could be worse. And I remember I was like, people were sending me positive quotes and things. And I just remember holding on to that too. And just being like, stop feeling bad for yourself. Like there's, it could be worse. And I think I kept, holding on to that as well is knowing that my situation, it's going to be okay. I did this once. I came back from this once. I felt so much love and support from the Thorns fans, from Portland, from my teammates, from this, the coaching staff. And I think all of that combined is kind of what was keeping me afloat in those moments. And then once, you know, I stopped feeling bad, my, bad for myself and realizing that I could do this. I had done it before. Um, I kind of just held on to that and ran with it. Well, it, there's a, a game that uh, the, the Thorns were playing, and uh, in the 35th minute, your number, jersey number is 30, uh, they started chanting your name. Uh, uh, and I, I watched the, the YouTube video that you had uh, put on your article, and, and uh, I got goosebumps. You know, what, was that, what was that like for you to, to, to feel that? You had written, that, that moment gave me a little extra ounce of hope. Yeah, it was, I really can't even describe it because I was so lost and everything was just, I, I was just in shock, honestly, for so long. And I just remember when that happened, I, I mean, I cry a lot. You can ask my teammates, I cry probably every day, but um, I'm a big time crier. <laughs> but I just remember like in that moment, I immediately was like hysterical. I, and I, I mean, I could I mean, it was my first year. So I, I, I felt so much love and in that moment I knew. And I knew that this was supposed to happen. Um, kind of going on what I said before, I just like, I knew this is where I was supposed to be. And I really felt that. And you had some support <laughs> from your, your supporters, <clears throat> Thorns. Now, do you also have support, you know, in other people in your life when you're looking, when you're going through this, these injuries, 
you know, who, who brings you up? Who, who is that person or persons who is like, Gabby, you know, we're here for you. We're supporting you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my parents, I mean, they, my mom flew out for my surgery. Um, they were there for me. My dad is like the biggest fan of me ever. I mean, I'm just very much daddy's girl. Um, you know, he, he's the one who got me into sports. So, you know, he really would build me up. He would send me motivational messages. Um, my boyfriend who he's been with me through my surgeries. Um, he, you know, he knew how, I mean, I think the people that you're closest with know how lost you are and they all from afar knew I was struggling so much, but they continued to believe in me and push me and know that I could get through this. And I think that's what I held on to. I mean, I, there were so many people that were so, I feel like, you know, you talk about this, there's so many people that are involved um, with your recovery process. Yep. And I think everybody had a different role, but all of that played a role into, you know, being to where I am today. And, um, where there was my trainers, my physical therapist, like just everyone, a part of the thorns, my family, and just my closest friends. I mean, so many people were involved in, you know, me coming back from this injury and, you know, feeling that love and support is what got me through. Yeah. And special shout out to all those, uh, PTs over at, uh, at Providence, uh, those, Gosh, those, those folks are amazing. amazing. Yeah, I spent yeah. a lot of time with them during my my recoveries. Um, <laughs> it's incredible. So you 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 actually had another surgery after this. You you've recovered from that, and I've been following um, you know your your Instagram and your Twitter accounts. Uh, how are you doing now? Good. I'm. I mean, I'm doing amazing. I mean, I feel great. I feel like you know I. I feel so normal. Like sometimes I would be going through, you know, I mean, at four months I was like running a lot. I mean, I was doing a lot and I kept texting like, cause I was, I was kind of bouncing back and forth between Portland. And so I I just remember like asking my trainers, like, is it normal for me to not be in pain? Because like with my first one, I was in so much pain till probably about, I was like a year, a year, honestly. And like at five months I was like, Everyone kept asking me, I forget I'm injured. I forgot I was injured. I'm like, I felt so good. <laughs> and I remember Eric, my physical therapist at Providence, he was like, this is the scariest part because you will feel normal, but you also still have to understand that you're still coming back from a major injury. So, you know, I feel really good. I feel I'm almost, I think right before all of this um, COVID-19 stuff happened, I was about to pretty much get integrated into 11 11 contact. So you know, obviously there's so many unknowns, but I do feel like I'm in a good place and I feel great. So that's wonderful to hear. And, uh, I know all your supporters out there. can't wait to see you back on the pitch. I can't wait to see you play as well. Uh, Gabby Seiler, thank you so much for joining me today and, and telling, telling me your story. And, uh, it's awesome to hear that, uh, we'll be back on the pitch whenever uh, soccer resumes again. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.